Okay, I'll start over <laughs> the session. I want to introduce about macrobiotics as I'm studying macrobiotics now for the first time. And I'm really feeling really inspired. Um, I did hear from Rakesh that there are some people here that know a lot about uh, about this subject already. So I'm <laughs> I'm really um, yeah curious to also hear from you like and to learn from you whatever you have to bring in. Um, so what I wanted to introduce is like the the basic concept um, of the energies that. Um, um, that are used within uh, microbiotics. Basically, it's um, um, it, it is about um, uh, how to um, sustain and uh, strengthen the life force, uh, and not definitely not per se about curing diseases, but how you can see everything around you, like the food that we eat, um, everything. Um, we actually take in not only the food we eat, but all everything around us is in, in that sense food to us because we take it in some form. Uh, and how this energy is, um, yeah, reacting to us and how we are reacting to our surroundings uh, and to our, to our internal surroundings. Um, so there's a play of uh, different forces going on, and a kind of a push and pull, um, um, yin and yang. Um, like earth and universe power and um, yeah there are actually two kind two kind of forces uh, one is like expanding and going upwards going outwards and one force is more about yeah um, bringing things together more solid and um, this yeah this play can be um, seen on all different kinds of levels um, uh, in uh, in our surroundings within ourselves, and nothing is ever pure um, the one or the other. But there are so many um, different yeah elements to it. So uh, something can be, um, for example, a plant um, can grow. Uh, very much upward that means it's like very uh um yeah uh, yin in a way because it's really uh, ha yeah going has it has this outward energy um but it maybe it also has like very um um yeah a part of the plant is growing under this underneath the soil and very compact like the roots and that makes it then that's then more the the young aspect, which is um, more compact, uh, or you can think about um, not only the physical effect something you eat has, but also the mental effect. Maybe something has physically a very, um, yeah, uh, compact effect on you, or like it's it makes you more, um, it gives you more power. But maybe mentally, it brings you into a state that has the opposite so there are all kinds of things you can um yeah you can think of like in all different layers how to approach your food uh, also in color um even and um yeah there this this power of um display between push and pull is something that we even like zoom out uh to level of the universe so how the the earth is also in a kind of a uh, cosmic dance around the sun and um you can yeah kind of compare it with i don't know if you can imagine uh in like this uh, athletics um uh, sports game where the, you have people like i call it like with uh, some kind of ball the yeah flinging um this, this big um like a shot put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a with a rope on it. So you so it's like there's there's this string between the ball this this heavy ball and the person. Uh, and this string is like in uh, it's this relationship and which makes also this ball rotate uh, in the in the um, universe like the 
sun and the moon, this string is invisible in a way, like there's no physical string between the earth and the moon, uh, but earth and the uh, sun. Uh, but these powers are still playing, like have the, the power from the, from the universe that is uh, making everything more compact on the earth. And there's a power from outwards from the earth that is making things um, yeah, more subtle. Uh, and basically, yeah, there's a, a ratio of sometime, something like 1.7 that there's um, the the power from the universe making things more compact is seven times bigger on the earth than um, uh, on us human beings as the, um, the power for making things uh, more subtle. Um, and yeah, this is a ratio that we use uh, also to um, balance yeah, the food that we eat, like to make sure that, yeah, how can we, um, yeah, for, um, compensate with that power because there's um, uh, a lot of power from the universe acting upon us and um, how can we uh, find a balance because the there I don't know if some of you know of um, this law of nature it's the uh, law of uh, homeostasis and um, yeah it basically says that everything in nature is um, looking for uh, to find the balance and nothing is ever like steady or like standing still everything is in a continuous movement um, and that's something you find also like in uh, yeah in nature that everything uh, is continually continuously moving and something we try to do also with um, in in my microbiotic with our food to find like a balance so that you can um yeah strengthen your life force and not bring yourself out of balance so that you have to compensate with other things so how to find that kind of middle ground um and so this force like between the universe and the earth it's also causing the earth to rotate and because of that rotation there is in the atmosphere something is happening like um, because uh, yeah the uh, this is how also how the the air um, the the wind circulations on the earth uh, are being formed so we have so then you have like different uh, regions on the earth um, um, because of the wind is um, pushed from the equator to the poles uh, you have like uh, um, yeah, a tropical region uh, uh, on the poles, you have a region and you have something in between, which is the more like the more temp temperate climates, but also like subtropical uh, to, yeah, but a bit more north. Um, and yeah, these regions also uh, have very different, um, yeah, um, way of dealing with these forces because on the on the equator, uh, this the force from the from the universe's contracting uh, force is uh, much more powerful than on the poles. Like it's um, um, yeah, on the poles, poles the, the the north and the south pole, the energy is much more um, yeah um, outwards. Let's say uh, from the the surrounding. Um, so how you can also see that in nature, it's kind of compensating with that because because of this uh, contracting force in the um, equator, you see that plants there are growing very much, yeah, also very fast and well, very much upwards. And um, the food that you find there is of yeah, lots of fruits and very light food um, to compensate with that. Uh, energy and like in the poles you see that uh, there's not much green growing there um, uh, there uh, yeah people like need lo lots more lot of more power uh, in the food and more minerals too that are very yeah like uh, yeah solid foods to um, yeah, provide them uh, with certain strength 
Um, so when, when you look at um, the different regions, then we have like the, the middle region, which is has a bit of both. So uh, there, yeah, uh, you see that lots of, yeah, the four season climate. So you have uh, to deal with all of these things. So um, uh, throughout the year, you see that uh, during the winter, we tend to um, uh, eat more like the more solid foods to compensate with the the cold uh, of the of the our surroundings and in the summer we because of the warmth and and we yeah and other uh, effects in the surrounding and the sun is closer you yeah tend to eat more uh, light foods so there are yeah all kinds of things to already happening in nature um, first to find the balance and natural like urges we already have um, and yeah where it becomes interest is interesting i find is when you think about our current society like where lots of people are um, not living in the surroundings where they grew up grew up in or where maybe genetically they have um, their body is built to live uh, on one of the poles or in the tropics and some so suddenly they live in like a temperate climate or yeah in a, in another climate then um, their uh, their physical body demands basically so how to deal with that and I find it very stu stunning that like there have been lots of uh, scientific researchers saying that um, uh, uh, what you see in a lot of migrant uh, groups is that a lot of disease is happening there because of also food patterns that, they, that have a big role because people hold on a lot to their um, to their culture maybe they come from like uh, a culture really in a really tropical climate and suddenly moved yeah in a very northern um climate and if they hold on to that only that food yeah that is not not what the uh, what their surrounding their current surrounding demands um so that is where uh, this balance can be created but then also if such a person only eats the food from that surrounding then it wouldn't meet the needs of their own physical like condition of their body so it is about like finding um yeah balance within um yeah within yourself like for each person it's you have different needs like um yeah someone from the tropics would then need um yeah, much lighter food in in a temperate climate uh, than than the ever than, than the average person that uh, grew up there has their ancestry there, etc. So, um, yeah, that's uh, uh, something um, I found very interesting about that and how um, yeah I was also wondering like how uh, other people are like trying to find um, a balance uh, in in their food in a certain way or how they if if there's something you observe like um, maybe with the seasons or if uh, or with um, certain uh, moon phases even if there if you um, observe something in yourself like um, a difference in in your food pattern or uh, needs that you have um, yeah i would be curious to to also learn from you and to uh, yeah to hear from you like what you are observing <laughs> <laughs> yeah a very secret comment from rakesh in the, in the chat <laughs> this is favorite habit chat bombing with something funny <laughs> Yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's fascinating. My my ex-wife is macrobiotic, and um, and so, yeah, so for the last 20 years, I've been 
having macrobiotic style food and just the, the balance, just the, the, the contemplation of the different types of foods that you eat, how and when you eat them. Um, I think probably one of the most fascinating things for me is how after having a meal that has been well thought through, you never ever are hungry, you never crave for anything. So because you've had all the different tastes, all the different flavors, you know, the bitter, the sweet, the, you know, sour, etc. in one meal, you never then feel like you need something else. And, and yeah, and just to be able to understand food from the perspective of how um, it really feeds you, really nurtures every aspect of you mentally, physically, spiritually, is um yeah it's fascinating i i i'm totally sold on it it's uh and it allows me to eat chilies so mm. that's another plus mm. like mm. if you had to describe because um sorry it was really interesting how you were describing the kind of like wider philosophy around it but if you had to describe like a kind of uh summary of macrobiotic style of eating like the way that philosophy is manifested in a way of eating what would you say that is? Hmm. Do you want to invite ah. Kirsten maybe to? Yeah, I can answer, but I also want to, yeah, maybe some, Christian. yeah, Christian or someone there would like to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, that would be really nice to hear. Yeah. Christian actually runs a macrobiotic center in Denmark and has been teaching for many, 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 mm. many years. So um, I think it'd be really lovely to hear from her. And her entourage, I mean, <laughs> whoever else is there. Yeah. So the question was that how macrobiotics manifest in terms of food? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how would you summarize that in terms of like a way of eating? Well, how would I summarize that? I think basically that we're looking at the condition of people and then eating aligned with it that uh, to find balance to find your center that different foods is more expensive different foods is more contractive and when you choose to eat you we need both contractive and expensive foods but we do need a balance and if we don't get the balance in terms of the food we're eating, then we'll create the balance in different ways, which is sometimes called disease. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, I think that's a really nice. I mean, we'll always create, we'll always, always create balance. No matter what, it, balance will be created. So. And is finding that balance like a very individual thing, like what the actual things that people would eat would look very mm -hmm. different depending on where they are in themselves? Yeah, because it belongs, it's not just about food. Every belief we have, every attitude we have also create a, an energetic shift in our bodies. So all depending on like, if I'm a person who is very responsible, I may be quite centered and quite earthy already so mm -hmm. i may be able to eat more expensive foods and get away with it and mm -hmm. if i'm a person who is not really knowing my direction who is a little bit more confused then i may very simply need more contractive food just to ground mm -hmm. myself and find direction and in mm -hmm. terms of those kind of energies of food um is it fair to say that things like fruits are more expansive foods and like root vegetables would be more contractive that's very safe to say yes mm -hmm. and especially if you have fruits that comes from the tropics mm -hmm. as i don't i didn't get your zoe so his name yeah so he said you know when you're eating food that grows in a different environment you got to want to be in that environment and then yeah. we need to then we need to spend a lot of money traveling to the south because we are eating the food that comes from there mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is one of the problems of like trying to follow, for example, a raw vegan diet, which has become very popular if you live in like a northern climate and you're trying to eat a lot of raw tropical foods in like a cold northern winter. Mm -hmm. um, there's some questions here in the chat. Shall I read out one of these? There's one from Sarah. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give an example of particular foods and how you would combine them? 
and which kind of foods are expansive or contracted. Wait, can I read a question? Okay, so um, uh, particular foods and how we combine them. Um, I think it is, it also depends a lot, it, it all depends. <laughs> So, um, like, which which foods are expensive and complective? Like, usually the you think about like foods that are really more solid uh, or rich of a lot of minerals. Uh, they they are um, um, more contractive or like um, uh, with yeah minerals or like salt is also like a mineral that that's actually dehydr dehydrates you. That's like really. Uh, um, contractive in that sense um, and expansive is uh, like when you yeah um, uh, like yeah fruits are already more on that side but if you go like something more vinegar or yeah like I think alcohol is like the the absolute uh, yeah an, an extreme uh, uh, yeah, expansive thing because you really go into a also mental state that's, uh, yeah, is really expansive. Um, uh, yeah, foods that also really contractive are like animal products, like, uh, yeah, meat and, um, yeah, egg, for example, are really contractive because they are very dense in, uh, in minerals. Uh, and yeah, when, yeah, foods that, try to combine is also also when you look at like cultures worldwide something that has has been uh, combined all over the world is like grains with uh, beans that's something you find worldwide in every culture there are recipes where combining uh, either rice with soy in the form of tempeh or tofu or like in Mexico, you have like then the yeah they have tortilla wraps with with beans often. Um, um, uh, in, yeah, in, in all kinds of cultures, you find the combination grains uh, grains with uh, beans. So that's something that's um, uh, yeah is yeah one combination that uh, yeah seems to work <laughs> a lot. Um, and yeah, the combinations you make is also based on like you in in a moment and what are you needing at that moment. Like I think also Christian had made it, made a very good point that when you're already very, you know that you're very um, um, yeah or, or grounded, then you don't need more grounding foods. But also if you're uh, or any actually less you don't it's not, not that you don't need it anymore but uh, for example if you're really stressed uh, uh, then people also uh, tend to go for more to the extreme so how can you um, yeah it, it's also like what whatever you uh, do do during the day depends uh, yeah besides actually what kind of um, food you need so if you are very, uh, yeah, hardworking, like working on the land a, a lot during the whole day, you need more food that has more, yeah, power in it, like more minerals maybe, to, because minerals give you a lot of energy. Um, uh, if you're like, be, yeah, in the, behind an office desk all day, then you may need less of that because then it actually you have an excess of energy which you then um, express in other ways like anger or <laughs> like uh, yeah other frustrations can pop up uh, because yeah if you eat too much uh, of something then yeah and you then your body uh, will find another way to make use of it so um, yeah and it's yeah a, totally personal process yeah so i see uh, there are three minutes left maybe if someone still has a question or remark there's another question here in the chat if you wanted to answer it 
Has there been the opportunity to notice this balance or energy impacts with foods grown with herbicides, synthetic That's fertilizers, etc., etc.? I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question, to be honest. But... Basically, is there a difference between organic, non-organic foods? Has yeah. anyone done the experiments and noticed? Obviously, you're just learning this. It's not, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's too short for you to answer this, but I don't know the guys maybe in Denmark, Christiana maybe. Would like to comment something. I think we, we can see, um, for me, one of, one of the, what uh, uh, Christian was kind of alluding to about this balance, you know, another from a homeopathic perspective, we call that homeostasis, which is this mm -hmm. continual balance. And, you know, is the balance up here? Is the balance up there? But our body will continue. It's always in flux. It's always. And but at what level is it at? And where does it find that balance? And that balance could be really low. It could be really, you know, no energy and just really lethargic. But and very hard to think and very, you know, you have to sleep for a long time. That's the balance that your body has found, which is completely different to, you know, someone who is really sharp and really, mm -hmm. wow, full of life and really full of energy. And, you know, that's the balance. And maybe some people are a little bit over the top and kind of really, you know, absolutely thinking too fast. You know so, you know, it's all about balance. Where is that balance and uh, how enriching? You know? so, so maybe if you're over the top, it could be, you know, you're, you're taking too much energy out of your system to maintain that balance. And therefore, other things are. So, yeah, this homeostasis, this continuous, incredible balance, you know, every single thing we do, everything we think creates imbalance, mm. dis-ease. But does the dis, do we recover from that dis-ease easily? because of where, you know, of how healthy we are, how mentally, physically, and spiritually healthy we are. And therefore that, you know, that, in, that kind of a tipping uh, reaction, you know, when we eat something really heavy, uh, you know, it takes out all our energy. But can we recover because we then do something either mentally or physically to kind of recover from that food? If you see what I mean? So every single thing we think, every single thing we do, creates imbalance but whether it come becomes chronic or acute is uh completely dependent on how overall healthy we are but we will always find that balance that homeostasis and that for me when i look at macrobiotics it really helps me to see you know the, the different types of foods that we can combine to to try and yeah create that that balance so, I don't know, I'm, I'm totally sold. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. And I think to return to what Claire was uh, asking about, like herbicides and synthetic fertilizers, like I don't know of any like empirical evidence, but like from my own experience of like the last 10 years growing some of my food and then like the last few years growing the majority of my food, I definitely feel a difference in eating like wild foods and foods that I've grown without any chemicals. And I feel in terms of the energy that they're much denser, that I can eat like a much smaller volume of food and feel very satisfied and energized rather than feeling like I need a big volume of food. Mm -hmm. So I would, yeah, feel like on an energetic level, there's definitely a difference that you can perceive. Yeah, I'm doing my tax returns right now. So I'm really stressed and really need to eat a lot. That's my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Ground you in your tax returns with lots of sweet potatoes. <laughs> okay, lovely. Well, thank you very much, Zoe, for that. And yeah, thank you everyone for chipping in. Okay, so maybe we stop this recording and start again.